Yo yo, so welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna take a look at Pfizer and do a fundamental analysis on it. Okay, so right now, Pfizer is trading at $27.51 per share and its total market cap is $153 billion. And when we add debt of $64 billion and cash of $44 billion, we get an enterprise value of $173 billion. So a pretty healthy level of debt when compared to its market cap of $153 billion. Now let's take a look at its revenue. So for revenue, we can see that it is pretty much stagnant. From 2014, it had 49.6 B in revenue. And right now in the trailing 12 months, it is at 50.9 billion. We can see a pretty huge spike here from the years 2020 to 2021. And as well as 2022, these two years both seem like they are abnormal years. And I don't really want to make guesses here, but it is likely due to the whole world purchasing vaccines from them. Their gross profit margin seems to be decreasing. It was once hovering around the 80% mark, but right now it is around the high 50s. Operating income right now is at 5.2 billion. And in the past, it was around 15 billion to around 8 billion, with the exception of 2021 and 2022 with 26 and 38 billion respectively. Interest expense in the trailing 12 months or year 2023 is at 2.2 billion. It used to be around the low 1 billion range. And moving on to earnings from continuing operations is right now at 2.1 billion, down massively from the 3.1 billion uh, that was in 2022. Net income also at 2.1 billion. Revenue per share now at $10.37, which is pretty decent comparing it to its share price of $27.51. Its earnings per share, however, is only at 38 cents, which is way lower than what it was in 2014 and 2015. Outstanding shares have been decreasing. In 2014, it was 6.3 billion and right now it is at 5.6 billion. I think it is nice to see most of the share count being decreased from the years 2014 to 2018. And from 2019 onwards, it is pretty much stagnant and it even increased a bit from year 2020 to 2023. Because Pfizer shares in 2021 onwards, actually received a lot of hype and it seems like shares were actually being overvalued at this point and some companies like to actually buy when the stock is very high but it seems like Pfizer also knew that suddenly making a lot of money from selling vaccines due to COVID might not last forever and they weren't actually buying at the peak but then again comparing its stock price from 2014 to 2018 to its earnings per share it doesn't seem like the value of the shares are undervalued at the same time but at least they did not buy into the hype of their own company when earnings per share were actually inflated by a so-called one-off event of course everything is hindsight and who would have known uh, when covid was going to end nobody but i like that they did not actually went out of their way to purchase even more shares uh, at the peak of their share price. Pfizer also pays out dividends and it is increasing at a pretty consistent rate. Increasing dividends paid out by 8 cents every year all the way until 2020 and from then on it is 4 cents every year which is quite interesting because in 2021 and 2022 was where they actually made a lot of money. However, it seems like they did not reaccelerate their growth of dividends to 8 cents like they did in the past and basically actually deciding to pay out less in their peak years of 2020 and 2022. It could be that they realized that they were reaching levels that were pretty unsustainable in the long run because the industry they are in from what I understand and let me just say that it is limited knowledge is that companies in the pharmaceutical industry spend a lot of money on research and development, on creating new medicine and whatnot. And it depends a lot on the approval of the government authorities, whether or not the drug should be legalized. And should the drug not be legalized, then basically all the R&D is for nothing because they are unable to actually profit from all the research and development. And you not only lose money on it, you also lose a lot of time that you spend on the R&D as well. But I don't want to say too much because I am just doing a fundamental analysis and I focus more on the numbers than what the industry is actually doing. And again, I am no pharmaceutical stock expert. 
So let's just continue on with the numbers. So as we can see, they are spending around $8 billion per year on average. And in the more recent years, they are spending upwards of $10 billion on R&D alone. And it seems like they are pretty well diversified as a company in terms of sales geographically as their foreign sales seems to make up around 50% of their total revenue. Now let's take a look at their balance sheet, cash and short-term investments at 44B, which is pretty good. Given their market cap of 150 billion, this is almost one third. Total current assets at 74B and total assets at 215 billion, which is actually higher than their market cap and also higher than their enterprise value at 170 billion. In the past, I always value their total asset value pretty heavily into my consideration whether I should buy a stock or not. However, after a few years of investing and doing research and whatnot, I realized that actually the total asset value matters, but it is not as important as I thought it was. Because it doesn't matter um, if you have a very high total asset number, but you're not able to actually convert that into earnings, then it doesn't mean anything. And if fundamentally the business is not doing good, then it is very likely that their total asset value will come down. And essentially, if they're not able to turn the business around, then their total assets will continue to decline. So I think for me, the total asset number is a good to have but not really a key deciding factor when I'm thinking about investing into a stock. And also they have 50 billion in goodwill and goodwill is usually something related to let's say brand value. And brand value is basically not an asset or not a real asset, but more of an intangible that you can't really convert into real money without of course selling the whole business, for example. Moving on, they have total liabilities of 117B and a net debt of almost 20 billion, which is actually, I assume, quite reasonable given that they make more than twice of 20 billion in revenue even on their lowest years. Finally, let's take a look at their cash flow. So in their trading 12 months, they have a net income of 10.4 billion, cash from operations at 12 billion, and a levered free cash flow at 5.6 billion which is actually way lower than their pre-pandemic numbers with the exception of 2018 where they only did 1.3 billion in free cash flow. In 2018, they still had a net income of 11.1 billion. So there could be like one-off items that required them to actually fork out like 10 billion. So lastly, let's take a look at their valuation and growth. So their PE right now, according to Seeking Alpha, is at 17.44 which to me is pretty high but still somewhat acceptable within the 20 PE range. And later on, I will give you guys my own valuation of Pfizer. Enterprise value to sales of 2.96, which is decent. And we can see that their 10-year average revenue growth is only at 1.27%. However, in the more recent years, they average a higher CAGR of 11.99% and basically the other metrics is just saying that Pfizer isn't really doing well as a company because their net income over 10 years is compounding at a negative 20.87%. However, I think it is not really fair to compare their 10-year CAGR of net income because in 2013 it seems like it, because in 2013 it seems like Pfizer had an abnormally good year. And in 2023, it seems like they are having one of their down years as well. We could easily compare from 2015 to right now and make the numbers seem a little better. So it is really up to you on your interpretation of the numbers. But for me, when I look at Pfizer, it seems like their numbers are quite cyclical and it goes up and down depending on how the year goes for them. There doesn't seem to be a clear pattern of when or which years they are going to do well. For example, in the COVID years or the pandemic years, nobody could have predicted that and their numbers did extremely well. And in other years, for example, in 2015, they did pretty bad at just 6.9 billion. So now let me give you my fair value estimation of Pfizer. We can see that their free cash flow per share is at $1.45 to $2.38, excluding the pandemic years. And their EPS is at $0.37 cents to $3.52, again excluding the pandemic years. For me, it seems like most of their years, EPS is lower than their free cash flow, with the exception of 2017 and 2019. Again, we're going to ignore this 2021 and 2022 numbers. So given how they have only made 
37 cents in EPS in 2023, but they have a free cash flow per share of $1.45. It doesn't seem fair to use 37 cents as the EPS or as the metric to value Pfizer. And I think for me, I'm going to be on the safe side and take a value of $2 of free cash flow per share or $2 of earnings per share and use that number as a guide. And I'm going to use a multiple of 10 to 12 as a fair price range. So that would put Pfizer at a fair value range of around $20 to $24 per share. And if I'm looking to purchase Pfizer as an investment, I would definitely look below $20 per share. Given the nature of Pfizer having up and down numbers on lots of different years, if I were to invest in a company like Pfizer, I would definitely be way more conservative and take its lower number just in case it actually drops back to its lower year numbers that I still have a good deal. And then again, an opportunity like that may or may not actually come, but I'm always okay to pass on a company and look for the next one if the opportunity doesn't arise. So with that, I thank you guys for watching. Let me know your thoughts on Pfizer. Give the video a like so that more people can see it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.